What am I doing? Covering. What is that called? That's called steeping. 15 to 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes, you leave it. Then you remove it, you stir it, and you tell them, God be with you. <laughs> and you have them drink it. And always pray with them. Let me tell you something. In December, I had two people from the same household at two different times call me. One guy, I grew up with his dad. Never met the little boy. I knew him when he was little, but not now that he's grown up has a baby. I said, I, I grew up with your dad. Your dad and I, when we were in high school, we used to hang out together. It was so funny. He was sick as a dog. I could tell he had a pneumonia. He refused to go to the doctors. Because I have to tell by law, you need to see a doctor. He said, I'm not going to the doctor. You be my doctor. I said, well, by the grace of God, we'll see. So I made this for him. I did the oil on his chest and his back. I could hear his lungs were rattling. I did it on the bottom of his feet. The boy was in bed for four days. Before, the next morning he was up bouncing around. They called me up, Christine, you won't believe what happened to Marcus. I said, what do you mean I won't believe? You guys call me every winter, I know what happens. But this was somebody who never experienced. So his mom, who lives in Vegas, she's a friend of mine on Facebook, found out what had happened for him. So she said, could you please give me the remedy? So I said, okay. Then a week later, somebody else in the same household was sick. Mm -hmm. So all these people, we're talking, I'm talking ghetto, gangbanger-like guys, okay? These are some really hardcore guys coming around me, talking about what you doing with that, and what you doing with that, and what is that for, and what is that? And every one of these tough guys drank my concoction. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. See, God's remedies will reach the hardest of criminals, it will reach the toughest people because when they're sick, they want a remedy. Yes. Isn't that something? <laughs> okay, so that's what I do for like pneumonias, coughs, cold. What is the remedy the prophet of the Lord says is the best for a cough? Do you guys remember? You and honey. You and honey. She said she said she cannot recommend any other cough medicine. Once you try this remedy, Robitussin will be sitting on the shelf. That's right. I'm not kidding. That's right. And she recommends, this is what she says, put some honey in a tumbler. So what I do is I do this. And some people say, oh, it has to be the Melaleuca. The, who can afford Melaleuca? And who can go to who knows where? God's health message has to be affordable to the poor as well as to the rich. If it's not affordable to the poor, it's not God's health message. Right. I got this from the 99 cent store. I think the 99 cent store sells the cheapest honey. But make sure it's not from China, because they're doing something from the honey from China. It's from America. What I do is I take this, and this is what it is. We can pass this around. This is crystallized, because every winter I'll make a batch and just stick it in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to dump this one out. But it still smells. No, you can't smell it. I'm going to make some in front of you guys right now. But you take some honey. It's real simple. I had my grandson last year, and my daughter had me buy all the baby food for him. She sent me the money. And so there would be these little baby foods. They'd come in two pack. And so I said, oh, I can use these for the remedies. I washed them and I saved them. And I didn't have to go buy any Ziploc or Glad stuff. So what you do is, what I do is I do, I'll show you. You just dump some honey. I normally do a cup, and I'll give this to whoever wants to take it home. And then you just take the eucalyptus oil. And these are only four something at the health food store. Azure Standard, if you order from them, these are like $4.20. This is the best brand, the Aura Acacia. I've been using this for years. There's some essential oils, they're selling $20 a bottle. They are a little better brand, but can your poor people afford those? Can you, if you needed to help this sick person, and they needed three different oils, what's cheaper, $15 or $60? 15 $15, right? $5 each bottle, or four something each bottle, versus $20 a bottle. The Lord will bless and make up the difference. Amen. So you put the drops, I do eight drops, OK? 
Okay, that's eight. And then you just stir it. I brought a spoon, but I don't know what happened to it. You just stir it. Now she says one teaspoon, and then she said upon retiring, then she says you may need to take it another time. I said, well, a tablespoon is three teaspoons. I've never had to take it a second time. Some people have, because they've had more aggressive cough. But tell them to be persistent. Take this like you would regular cough medicine every three, four hours. But you just stir it, and then you just say, take your spoon, tablespoon, and say, open wide. Mm -hmm. For your children, one teaspoon. This stuff is, and if you want, we'll pass this around. You guys can smell it. I mean, it's strong. This stuff is wonderful. And this is the remedy. Let me ask you guys a question. If the wheel has already been invented, should we reinvent no. it? No. 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 Should I be reinventing the wheel and try to make it? No. It's already reinvented. Why do I need to reinvent it? Now, if I have a remedy, and the prophet of the Lord says it's number one, and it only has two items, versus somebody comes along and says, oh, I have a remedy for cough, and they have this many items, we want to be economical with our time, and we want to be economical with our money. I'm sorry, but if the prophet Lord says it's the number one, why am I trying to perfect it? It's not going to happen. Um, question um, about infants and honey. I have read that it's not good to give honey to the infants. Right, not under one, one years of age. Oh, is it one? I thought it was two. Some people say two, some people say one, but the research I've done, because my girlfriend is pregnant, she's seven months, and she was sick five months ago, and she said, oh, I can't take honey, I'm pregnant. I said, no, it's just for the babies, but I said, you know what, let me do my own research, and I asked a lot of people who do medical missionary work, and they said, she's fine taking it, but everything I read said under one year of age. Why is that? Botulism. Their body cannot break something down in the honey and it's a buildup and it causes botulism. You know, like, remember when you were a little girl or a little child and your mom told you don't buy the dented cans of the canned foods? Because it causes botulism. That's a poison in your body. And for little kids, it could kill them. So, so when you're pregnant, you shouldn't be taking it either? No, you can't. Uh, she didn't think she could uh, because you're not supposed to give it to a baby under one. So she thought because the baby was in her stomach. So I went and did my own research and I talked to, I believe, Dr. Thomas, I mean, Thomas Jackson and Danny Beer. I called a few people, and they said, no, it's okay when you're pregnant. So then what would you do if you have an infant that has like a cough or something? I'd do the eucalyptus oil and rub it on their chest and on the bottom of their feet, and I would put it in a humidifier and a vaporizer. I would put them in the sunshine. I would give, get them fresh air. I would give them... Um, water with maybe a little vitamin C if I could give it to the little baby, just a little tiny pinch, or put some lemon in their water. Uh, my foster sister's son has the croup, croup, and um, bad. She was dying, and she's like, Chris, what do I do for him? I said, she goes, what do I do? And I said, put lemon in his water. She said, oh, why didn't I think of that? And she said within two days, he was like 50%. Just from lemon. Now, with them being uh, infants, is it, I know we do our water, you know, we could do lemon a lot, but I know lemon is acidic, correct? So it wouldn't be wise to have them have too much lemon? Just a little. They don't need a lot. Yes. Yes, just a little. Now, let's think of something else. What about earrings? Garlic and olive oil. How do you know? I Where's my marker? Is this it? I am going to tell you, my younger son Christopher used to get earaches all the time because his father's outside the home and he's not a vegetarian and he gave him milk all the time. We used to struggle about this. My son would come home every weekend with an earache when he was little. I'd get the garlic. What you do is you take cloves. I do about six cloves, and you pull them off. I'll just do one here just to show. If you take a large knife that has a wide blade, this isn't as wide, but some of the knives are bigger, and you just press it on your garlic, you just remove the peel. Very simple. So simple to remove it. I do about six of these. I smash them, and 
and then I chop them. And you can have them all together and chop at the same time. I use a bigger knife to chop them. Then what you do is you put it in a saucepan. And I use about a third a cup of olive oil. And then you turn the heat on low. You want it hot enough to heat the oil but not cook the garlic. Once you see the oil starting to sizzle, turn it off. And then when it cools off, you can put it in a little glass burger baby jar or, you know, the little glass jars that have the pimentos in them, whatever. Utilize your jars. Wash them out real well. Sterilize them. And then put it in there. And then you take a cotton ball, you break a piece off, you dip it in the oil, and then you have them lay sideways, and you pull their ear back and you drop about four drops. And then with the other piece of the cotton ball, you ball it up and put it in their ear. Every time I have used that remedy for my son, I kid you not, within 30 seconds, his pain was gone. And his father used to say, no, he's a hypochondriac. I think he's just, it's just a, like a placebo effect. And so this was a few years ago. No, maybe a year ago. His father called me in the middle of the night and said, I've given him his amoxicillin. He, it's not working because he had him over the weekend. He got sick. I said, stop giving him the milk. And so he said, what do I do? What do I do? So I told him, you, you could either do it at your home. Do you have olive oil and garlic? He said, yes. He said, when he gave it to him, within like immediately, he said his son went back to sleep. But my son was up screaming and crying, call my mom. She'll tell you what to do. Because the stuff he was giving him wasn't working. <laughs> And so he knows about the remedies. He has his father, who's not even a Christian, calling me and asking me for the remedy. So I just think that's such a blessing. But it really works. Another thing people could do, which my kids think is weird, I wouldn't do it to my kids, but you can literally, if you don't have garlic, you can cut an onion. That's right. Get a thick slice, put it over the ear, and you can get like an ace bandage and put it, you can tape it there. That'll work. But the garlic and the olive oil, but my kids think they're weird with this big onion on their ear. But that'll work, that'll draw it out. But that works great for an earache. Okay, so we covered earache, we covered, yes? Do you, um, what about MRS? MRSA, yes, that's a staph infection. Do you know what medical science says is the number one remedy for MRSA? I was like, man, this is something, huh? Turmeric? No, not turmeric. <laughs> Although I wouldn't doubt that might not help. I wouldn't doubt that helps. This is the number one remedy. You guys remind me, send me an email to get this article. I have it at home. I just have to look in my file. This is the number one remedy. They said nothing will kill MRSA like garlic. Why is that? Raw garlic. Yeah, huh? Raw garlic? Yes. Why is that? Why garlic? It's an antibiotic. It's an anti-infective. It's an antibiotic. Do you know this is the number one antibiotic on the face of the earth? And so you can mash it. If they can't eat it, just mash it, put it in a cup, put boiling water, steep it for 15 minutes, have them drink the juice, the water, two, three times a day. That will help them. Yes. How do you not have the garlic smell? <laughs> um, parsley. And there was something else somebody said, if you eat this, it'll get rid of the smell, and I've never heard of that. Does anyone remember? Parsley. Parsley works great. But you know what? I don't care what I smell like. If I have MRSA, <laughs> I'll walk around, I'll, I'll dress like a garlic. <laughs> if I have MRSA, MRSA is deadly. My girlfriend got MRSA from someone. She had... She, it was so funny. What, what is MRSA? What is MRSA? MRSA stands for, it, it's a staph infection. If you hear staph infection. I'll give you the medical name, but what it is, is it's an infection that's mainly um, contracted in the hospital. Especially among small children. And in the winter months, it's really high. And that's because people are not in the sun. But it's a major infection. 